The sensor of the ZV-E1 is larger than the entire iPhone camera unit, so why would anyone make such a far-fetched comparison? Well, I got two words for you, and it's not Apple fanboy, it's Apple Log. Let's talk about the iPhone and low light. This thing has a tiny sensor. I mean, it is so small, it's, it's tiny, okay? And because of that, it requires a fast lens. It does have a fast lens. However, the sensor is still tiny. So what you could do with the log footage is you lower the mid-tone exposures and that's how you get clean footage. So if you have light, um, you can certainly turn on the iPhone's built-in light and generally it knows how to output enough to get it right. Let's just turn it on. Yeah, I mean, you don't want this bright light flashing on people. But other than that, um, it can come in clutch if you really need it. Anyhow, let me know what you guys think about the low light. Here's the footage and I'll do the reveal right now. I'm using auto white balance, auto exposure. I didn't even adjust any of the the brightness settings on the iPhone. Keep in mind, you do need to have this SSD if you want to do 4K60, and that's one of the drawbacks, but not really. Because with this a certain type of workflow, you really want to have everything on the SSD. You don't want hundreds of gigabytes on this iPhone because the iPhone, it costs a lot of money to buy storage. And even if you buy the max amount amount of storage one terabyte you know it might not be enough right and on top of that do you really want to transfer hundreds of gigabytes worth of data over a usb-c cable to the computer granted it is much faster than lightning it's 20 times faster but you don't want to do all that transfer instead you take this apart and you move this to your editing software and then you're done. You don't do anything. You just drag and drop everything over and it creates shortcuts. It doesn't copy it over, it just creates shortcuts and you edit right on here. When you're done, then you wipe these out. I mean, the downside is that the files are so large. They're, they're enormous. ProRes HD 30 gives you 578 minutes. HD 60 gives you 289 minutes. 4K 24 gives you 179 minutes. 4K 30 gives you 144 minutes and 4K 60 gives you 72 minutes. I mean, on the ZV-E1, I'm doing 4K 24 right now and I've got like 14 hours left and that's what it partially filled already. So, you know, it takes a lot larger bit rate just to match the quality of the ZV-E1, okay? And it gets pretty darn close to matching it and I'm not gonna lie, it is incredible. Granted, if you want more control, you can certainly install apps like uh, the Blackmagic app, which gives you zebras. You can change the white balance, etc. However, this is not about that. It is for iPhone users. And maybe you could be like my wife and not the most technically sound person and still use it because you just record an Apple log and then you ship the files or ship the drive, give the drive to somebody else to edit. And there, you are done with it. It's no nonsense type of deal. Okay, so here's the problem with the iPhone in that when you're using it for a studio type scene in my second rate studio, <gasps> you can see that it's not so good. But check this out. Apple log. It makes all the difference in the world. 
the iPhone default profile HDR mode, it can go nuclear. And Apple Log, you look more human, okay, more organic. With this latest update, Final Cut comes with Apple Log. So you've got everything ready to go. And I'll tell you, the files are extremely malleable because, well, they're, they're humongous. So they should have the latitude they do. And that means that you can shoot extremely simple. I'm shooting everything in auto and it doesn't t seem to clip. I mean, when you're looking at the initial uh, version, yeah, sure, it looks bad. When you import your video, Apple Log is already applied, as you can see right here. It is kind of nuclear. And if you have none, then it's washed out as heck. So I'm gonna select one. And this is something that I made myself and it just happened to work out. And this is from the ZV-1, the ZV-1, the small one inch sensor camera. What I wanted to get was just a baseline. So I got the baseline and the color science is there, but it lacks saturation. So you just crank up the saturation. That's it. I have my look. The advantage of the iPhone, obviously, is going to be that The focal range is a very big deal. The iPhone is a 13, which is tremendously wide, and the Sony, well, I have a 20 to 70. That's the closest thing I could get with a single lens. So I'll need multiple lenses to even match the iPhone. The versatility and the simplicity of the iPhone clearly wins it here. Yeah, so it is way too noisy out there, and the neighbors, they just have no sympathy for YouTubers. Anyhow, the iPhone, it has an intelligent mic system. In reality, you should just get a lap mic, a wireless, like the Wireless Go 2 from Rode or any other type of wireless mic and be done with it because there's only so much that a smartphone can do. There's only so much that your camera can do with the built-in audio. Granted, it should be common knowledge, but maybe it's not that, you know, built-in audio is just not that great. If you're outdoors, and you're close like this type of distance right here yeah the zv1 the iphone it can work if it's windy the iphone doesn't really have a place to have a wind muff where the zv1 does yeah it's best bet just to fix your audio and get it done right with a, a wireless system for either one of these cameras it's just better that way and uh, guess what ProRes Log works with the selfie camera. And the reason why it looks a bit flat is that, well, this is the most microscopic sensor there is on the entire iPhone. Best to avoid at all costs. However, if you need to use it, then it's there for the shallow and vain, and I'm not judging. Bruh. So let's talk about the drawbacks. And the most obvious one is the file size. I mean, if you're going to be filming in Apple Log, then the file size are humongous. And if you're not going to be filming in Apple Log, well, you can't save those files. I mean, you can't film it directly to USB-C. This USB-C is only for when you're in that ProRes mode. And so you can't use this USB-C. Granted, you can record and then move the files to your USB-C, but it's just not the same. Another drawback is that what you get is what you get and you accept it. This is a phone. It has a built-in battery. Once you run out of batteries, you have to recharge it. You can't just swap out another battery. These are the lenses you get. So if you get the iPhone Pro Max, you get 13, 24, 120, but you're missing all that in between. If you get the 13 Pro, then you get 13, 24, and 77. You get what you get and you accept it. If only I could make my wife feel that way. Granted, because it is an iPhone, you can have apps. It has high connectivity. It is state of the art. You have a mini computer in your hand, okay? You can travel with just this and this, and you can get high quality footage. Another disadvantage is the bokeh. Uh, it's a phone. Uh, there's cinematic mode, but cinematic mode and log, they don't work together. With uh, the ZV-E1 or any full-frame camera, APS-C, even micro four-thirds tiny sensor cameras, yeah, yeah, they're tiny. You can modify your lenses. You can get large apertures, very large apertures, even with this measly F4. 
you're getting pretty good bokeh, right? Because I'm close to it and the focal length is longer. These focal lengths, there. And the worst thing about the iPhone is the flare. And I know Apple's been working on those coatings and I can feel that they've certainly improved. They have, they've, they're a lot better than before. But still, uh, you can get flare very easily and they're impossible to correct. How are you gonna correct this flare? <laughs> it's just all over the place. To be fair, I mean, I mean, flare can be a problem with conventional cameras as well. However, it's rather mild in comparison. It's like extremely mild in comparison. The Apple flare is just, it's wild. It is completely all over the place. It is what it is, just accept it. Final thoughts. Well, I enjoy using the ZV-E1 a lot more than the iPhone. It adds a layer of separation. My phone is my phone. I receive calls, text messages, post crap to Facebook. But my camera, I do none of that, right? I just use it as a camera. And I appreciate that layer of separation. However, to be fair, I mean, with the SSD drive on the iPhone, I do feel that there is now a certain layer to the iPhone. When I want to take high quality footage, I have to bring this along and I have to use this intentionally because my crap footage is going to be stored on my phone, but any other higher quality footage is gonna be stored on the SSD. So I do like that layer of separation. My phone is going to be with me all the time and adding this just little thing right here, I can put it inside of my my phone case. My phone case is one of those dual phone holders and it's not too big. And I just like all that space because I could just put all my cards. It's just less things for me to forget if I have it all in one place and I'm getting older, I'm not getting any younger. I do need to have a place where I remember where I put everything. And uh, the simplicity of having just one cable to transfer data, one cable to charge, yeah, that that really jives well with me because that this cable is always going to be with me as well. No doubt in my mind, I'll be using big sensor cameras for a very long time. However, I like the fact that I can be normal. Not that my wife would ever accept normal, but I could, I could blend in with the crowd with this type of camera. And nobody is going to say a thing. If I have this little thing right here connected to it, people might think it's a battery bank. Nobody cares if you have your phone out. Nobody cares if you're recording with your phone. Nobody is even going to bother looking at this thing. You become invisible, like middle-aged women. <gasps> Anyhow, let me know your thoughts on the iPhone Pro. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share. See you in the next one. Take care.